Hey there, Mr. Nathan is so excited to see you for this special edition of Storytime. Today, we are reading a book called The Mitten String by Jennifer Rosner. All right, look at all those mittens. What do you notice about the mittens? Oh, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They got different colors. Can you name some of the colors? Oh, yeah, I heard yellow, blue. Oh, yeah, green. Great job. So I wonder what we're going to learn about in our story today. Are you ready to get started? Make sure you are in your comfortable spot. And you know, Mr. Nathan might ask questions while we're reading. So make sure and give me your answer. I can't wait to hear. All right. It was said that Ruthie Tober's family warmed the hands of the entire village because everyone who lived there, big and small, wore uh, mittens knitted from Tober wool. All right, so do you, do you know what mittens do? What did they say it did? Warmed our hands. So let's practice that. Let's practice warming our hands. We can do that without mittens, right? We rub them back and forth. Awesome, great job. All right, the Tober sheep had the fluffiest wool in the region. On shearing day, friends and neighbors came to help Ruthie's family clip and gather the soft downy fleece. So with the picture that we see, what does it look like shearing means? Do you know? <laughs> yeah, you're right. They, they took the sheep to get a haircut and they went buzz, buzz. Right? Do you get your hair cut like the sheep? You know, Mr. Nathan does. All right, let's see what else happens. The Tobers worked hard, scouring, picking, carding the wool. Ruthie, who loved bright colors, prepared the pots for dyeing. When it uh, is time for spinning, Ruthie's mother stood at the great wheel and spun. Oh, so with the wheel, what shape is that? Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. It's a circle. And maybe a little bit ago, like a couple of weeks ago, you might have done some dyeing, right? Yeah. Oh, yep. Easter eggs. So what's your favorite color? When you dyed your Easter eggs, did you have a favorite color? You know, Mr. Nathan really likes the color of his shirt. What color is that? Oh, pink, yep. All right, let's keep reading. Most nights, Ruthie and her mother sat together and knitted. Ruthie loved how their stitches, each one a tiny knot of yarn, added up to form warm, cozy garments. Ruthie especially enjoyed making mittens. She knitted plenty of <laughs> extras in the smallest sizes because she noticed that many children lost their mittens every winter. You know what? That's awesome because what did she do? She kept all of her friends and made sure no matter who they were, they had mittens when it got cold again. All right, let's keep reading. Ruthie herself had lost some. Her mother reminded her with a wink. Can you wink? Mr. Nathan can't wink. I wish we could tell from the picture about a wink, but Mr. Nathan has a hard time with it. But if you can, I, I would love to see it. On market days, Ruthie's parents loaded their wagon with bolts 
of uh, cloth and heaping baskets of yarn to sell and trade. Ruthie took along a basket of her most colorful mittens. All right, so she's riding into town on the horse in the wagon. Let's see what happens. One day on the way home from the market, Ruthie's family came upon a woman standing with her baby at the side of the road. The woman did not speak to them. Instead, she held up a slate with a neatly printed message. Her husband had gone for help. So let's see what that message says. It says, broken wagon. H-E-L-P. Do you know what that is? Oh, help. Got it. So they need help because their wagon broke. Um, why do you think it's written on the board and she didn't say it? I bet we'll find out later on in the story. So let's keep reading. The Tobers invited the woman and her child to spend the night. Smiling gratefully, the woman wrote her name, Bela, and her baby's name, Aaron, on the slate. Ruthie noticed a length of yarn wrapped around Bela's wrist. The yarn was the deepest blue Ruthie had ever seen. Deeper even than the special blue thread braided into the white tassels on her father's prayer shawl. Ruthie imagined the mittens she could make with yarn like that. All right, and now she's talking to her mom. Let's hear what they're talking about. Why doesn't Bela speak? Ruthie asked her mother. Bela is deaf, her mother explained. Do you know what that means? Do you know what deaf means? Mm. Okay, yeah, she can't hear, right? So we point to our ear, she can't hear. I love it. Okay, let's see. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> she is deaf, her mother explained. She cannot hear. She cannot speak. Luckily, she reads and writes. It's a very, uh, it is very wise of her to carry chalk and a slate. So why is that smart of her to do? Oh, yeah, I remember when the, the wagon was broken down. That's how she talked to people. You're right. Ruthie watched in amazement as Bela communicated with Aaron using hand signs. To Ruthie, it looked as if Bela were standing before an invisible spinning wheel. Her words flowing from her fingers like delicate strands of yarn. Can you see she's using her hands to talk to the baby? That night, Ruthie could not fall asleep. She wondered what it was like for Bela not hearing and not speaking. Was silence peaceful or was it lonely? How many of you play the quiet game? Oh, you do? I used to, too. Mr. Nathan did. I know. I, I would like it sometimes, but sometimes not so much. If Aaron needed uh, her during the night, how would Bela know? What do you think is going to happen? How would she know? If she can't hear, how is she going to know her little baby needs her? All right, let's see if you're right. Ruthie peered into the room. Bela lay sleeping, one arm dangling over the side of the bed. Blue yarn was still looped around her wrist. From there, it trailed across the floor into the cradle, ending in a bow around Aaron's tiny arm. 
Oh, wow. So they're attached together by the arm. All right, let's see what happens. Ruthie remembered seeing the string trail through the village from little Sarah uh, Lowry's sick bed to the synagogue's holy ark. Ruthie's mother explained that the string carried the family's prayers from Sarah to get well again. But why would Bela, <coughs> excuse me, why would Bela tie a piece of <coughs> yarn between herself and the baby at night? Just then, Aaron began to cry. So he was like, where, where? Um, his arms moved the yarn tug so he moved his arm he's like help me I don't know what's going on and he moved his arm and Bela lifted Aaron in a soothing embrace and warms his chilly hands on her cheek so his hand got cold I wonder how uh, Ruthie can help them oh Okay, that's a great idea. Let's see if it happens. Early the next morning, Ruthie sat to work knitting the softest, fluffiest skein of yarn. She stitched it, uh, stitched a slender cuff and thumb and shaped the tiny mitten top. Soon, Ruthie had one mitten just the right size for Aaron. Oh, wow. Look, you were right. She knitted a mitten for him. Oh, look at that. As she was about to start the other, Ruthie had an idea. This time, she knitted the mitten big enough to fit Bela. Then she connected the mittens, large and small, with a length of string, perfect for Bela and Aaron on the coldest nights. When Ruthie gave her the mittens, Bela smiled with delight. She showed Ruthie the sign for mittens, sliding her left hand over her right. So like that. And then um, after breakfast, oh, and her right hand over the left. Okay, so we go like that and like that okay can you do that let's do it one more time boom it's hard to see mr nathan i know do your best and then boom all right uh after breakfast ruthie knitted bela and aaron each a second mitten ruthie excitedly paired off the mittens for the market, connecting them with a string that could be threaded through a child's coat sleeve. The string would keep the mittens from getting lost. You are both clever and uh, kind, Ruthie's mother said, beaming with pride. You make our world a bit better with every stitch. Guess what? I think you make the world better too. Later, Bela showed Ruthie the woody plants she could use to make the bright blue color for her dye pots. Not long after, Bela's husband arrived with the repaired wagon to take his family home for the Sabbath. Bela unraveled the yarn from her wrist and handed it to Ruthie. Ruthie wrote her a thank you on Bela's slate. She also wrote the day of the next shearing. By the time Ruthie thought Aaron would have outgrown his tiny mittens, she would make him a bigger pair, bright blue and, of course, tied together with a length of to tober yarn. Ruthie could hardly wait. Wow, how exciting was that story? What was your favorite part? You know what was cool to Mr. Nathan about that? 
even though they had to talk differently, they all figured out how to talk together. And they didn't say, oh, I don't know how you talk, so I'm not going to talk to you, right? Isn't that so nice when you're able to talk to someone and they hear you and you're able to have a conversation? Yeah, Mr. Nathan agrees. Thanks so much for spending this time with me.